Hey everybody, Nick here, and uh, today we're going to do a little assembly and maintenance on this little guy right here. This is the uh, Cricket Knives uh, LCK. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I didn't even remember the name of this guy. This just showed up from Frankie and Bird over at the Birdshot IV channel, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take it apart here. Long day already, and it's only, oh, God, it's not even noon yet. But that's okay, because we got some disassembly to do. Disassemblies are always therapeutic for me. Mind you, I need way more therapy than this, but, you know, it's it's a good start, right? And uh, so today, uh, hold on just a second. My angle is all wrong here. It's just filming a big old review. Just filmed my review of the Viper Shop Shopping System. It's going to not come out in any relation to this video, so, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you that, but actually, I could just screw with you guys. Like, oh, I just revealed a review to Stan Wilson non Flipper Flipper, and oh, wow, look, I just had my interview with Chris Reeve. Just make up all kinds of things. It'd be fun. Controlling my view is, is always a joy. Anyways, I digress. You can tell it's going to be one of those disassemblies. I'm, I'm using a T6 driver here to pull out these bazillion screws. Um, and I am setting them aside in the order they came off the knife in these little grooves at the top of the mat here, which make things a little bit easier. Sorry about the mat being grody. That is, believe it or not, something I get up complaints about on a regular basis. But the thing is, um, it's the nature of the beast, with this mat at least. And it's pretty good to me otherwise, so I'm willing to put up with a little bit of grotitude. Alrighty, holy threadlocker, Batman. I mean, seriously, look at the amount of freaking... Is that threadlocker or earwax? Or maybe the factory worker decided... I don't want to even think about that. But whatever it is, it's out of there, so that's that's good. Let's go ahead and see if we can take this guy apart now. Now that all of the screws are out of the way, it should go apart. And in fact, we can see that the clip screws do not go all the way through. So, not sure why this isn't coming apart, actually. It's a CRKT, so it's not like the tolerances should be, oh my god. Um, well, let's, uh, let's, let's bust out my little tool here. <laughs> all right. Um, there we go. This is just a, uh, the Enigma, um, pocket probe by, uh, the, the Rat Bastard Tools. It's just a very nice little pry bar. It's no Medford, but it does the trick, right? Yeah, yeah buckle in. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> All right, come on. Come loose. Why? Oh, it's probably just all that thread locker in there is not wanting to come loose. It's gotten into something or another. Yeah, okay. At the very least, oh, I can't pop this top portion off. Is that screwed on? No, it's just tight. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come loose. Unleash the fury. Come on. Wow. Guys. This ain't going so well. What's wrong here, little guy? Why don't you want to come apart? I know you want to come apart. Oh, well, there's the... Apparently the stop pin is out. That's good, right? Why are you not popping open? What the heck is going on here? I have no idea what's going on here. That's okay. It's actually not new. My lack of idea is, is well documented. Let's pop this side. Maybe that's the issue here. There's that. Okay. Come on. I think it's just they use so much thread locker that it's now like locked around the pivot or something. So it's just going to need a little bit of love in this direction here. Everybody needs some directional love sometimes, you know? Unconditional but directional. There we freaking go. Yeah, that was the issue. Just a bunch of freaking thread locker on there. Whoa! Holy crap, this is on washes. Wow. Well, that's the last thing I expected to find. Yes, yeah, so you can see here, there are no bearings here. This is a very smooth flipper, but it's on washes. Um, that's actually really neat, I gotta be honest, because, um, well, bear, uh, washer systems are very, um, 
are a little bit more robust, that is, than, uh, than bearing systems are generally. And to have it be this, this flippy um, on washers is pretty impressive, um, especially out of a CRKT. Even if it is co-branded with Ruger, the, the the gun company, which okay, whatever, sure. Ow, well, that's the shop. Freaking tried to take me out, Ruger bastard. There we go. Or maybe it's just flared at the tip. Could that be the issue here? I have no idea. But either way, I I won. So there we are. All right, slide this out of here. The thing is, like, this is a weirdly not crappy knife. Um, yeah, look, you can see all the thread lock peeling off on the inside there. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. But what it means is that we'll probably be in a slightly better position to get this knife running beautifully when we're done. Because it won't have 50 pounds of crap in the pivot. But anyways, this is surprisingly nice. This is surprisingly nice knife. Yeah, this is not a bad piece. At least on my initial impressions. Mind you, I haven't carried it. It may turn out to be a total piece of junk or something like that upon further reflection. But um, uh, so far, so good. I, I'm not unimpressed here. So, uh, yeah, that's always pleasant. You know, cricket, I mean... No one would keep coming back if they weren't nice some of the time, right? It's an awful, awful argument to use here. But anyways, it is a thing. So, uh, yeah, we are quite nearly done, actually. There are no bearings. There's no speed safe assist. That would be Kershaw anyways, but still. It's just, uh, let's put it back together. All righty, let's go. Hopefully it'll go back together easier than it came apart. <laughs> That's for damn sure. All righty, um, we're going to go ahead and pop the pivot through here. I think the pivot may just be flared at the tip. That could be my problem here. Like, I wonder if that's somehow the case. Well, whatever. What I'm going to go ahead and do is use a little bit of oil here um, with the hopes that that'll help slide this pivot through, and we'll lubricate the process anyways. All righty. Yeah, I feel like it's just a very, very tight pivot fit here. Come on. It's not the case that there's a D-shape or anything to it, right? No, they have a D-shaped pivot, but not a D-shaped hole. Cool. Oh, cricket. Come on. Is this going to be one of those disassemblies? Now, the sad thing is that this is the very first disassembly that I've sat down for today. Um, and that's sad because, you know, there were occasionally these moments where you just feel like, okay, I need to stop what I'm doing. I need to stop doing these disassemblies, and very often it tends to be budget knives. You know, I, I often will talk about the distinction. There we go. It looks like we're getting closer. I'll often talk about the fact that there are knives that are put together well, that are, you know, well built and everything like that. Um, such that, there we go, that popped through, thank God. All right. But anyways, there are knives that are put together that are, uh, you know, well enough constructed that it doesn't really matter how you put them back together. Like, they, they, they will go back together the same way, the correct way, every damn time. That's a good engineering thing. Um, and then there are knives that rely on the disassembly and reassembly to be worth anything approximating a damn. Um, and those tend to be really frustrating because it means that basically the knife is at the mercy of the, the, the skill of the disassembler or assembler. Um, and that, you know, a person who does that all day, every day is going to have the one up on somebody like me who just takes apart a knife once. Um, you know, there, there may be a trick to getting uh, one of those style pieces back together in working order. Um, and so, yeah, I'm worried that this is one of those. Drop this washer back into position here. Put a little lubrication on the detent ball path. Okay, now let's put it back into position here. The trick is going to be getting both of these pins to seat right. 
And unless I do that, I got a problem. And part of the solution to making that happen is going to be to put the disengage the liner lock there. Come on. I'm just trying to get this guy snapped into place here. Okay. Now, why is this not wanting to... Oh, that's because the liner lock is the other all the way over. Okay, now we're better. All right. Actually, wow. That went back together smoothly. Let's go ahead and lock the pivot in before it realizes it wants to suck. And we push our lock. Okay, T8 is the pivot size. I'm going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. If you're ever curious about the tools I'm using for a disassembly, go ahead and check my... Uh, uh, knife disassembly toolkit video. I keep that up to date. And that'll show you everything that I'm using here. Okay, that's way too tight, but I don't care. Um, I will tune that in a second once I've got everything back together. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's a good way to see, you know, what exactly, you know, get links, etc. to all these things. Okay, that was touch and go for a moment there, but it, it popped back together. Mostly when I realized that I'm used to putting liner locks together from the opposite side. And so once I realized that I was, you know, needing to lift rather than push, and that it was truly wanting to be at 110% lockup, things got a little easier. All right, come on. Slide through. Go in. Come on. All right. It's like trying to shove an earthworm back into the hole. Just doesn't want to go there. Give it time, it'll get there on its own. Unfortunately, that part doesn't work for knives. I'm yet to have a knife spontaneously reassemble itself. Which is a real shame some days. Like if lion steals sp spontaneously reassembled themselves, that'd be great. Take it apart, clean everything up. Lubricate, leave it on the table, let nature take its course, right? Life finds a way. All right. And this guy. Okay, so that's a little too tight, but that's okay. We knew it was going to be so. Now we just need to find the perfect tightness. We need to find the tightness at which it flips reliably, but has zero blade play. Okay, right now it has blade play. And it started off with a little bit of blade play. It may be that that's what needs to happen for this to flip reliably and be happy. It was also rubbing a little bit on one scale. I appear to have fixed that. Holy crap, guys, it worked. It's back together. Choke up. This knife weirdly doesn't suck. All right. Um, go figure. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful uh, rest of your day. Bye now.